it doesn't have to be a huge pot to say a lot about a player. And that's what we're talking about here with Kristen Bicknell and Carrie Katz. Kristen Bicknell, a rising star in the poker world. She's something like GPI player number 13. I think Some, even higher. Yeah, top 20, probably top 10. She's been doing excellent recently, including in this event, an Aussie Millions event that's 100K Aussie dollars to buy into. And she has, ends up in a hand with Carrie Katz, which on its surface, there's not a ton of action, but the one action that really does happen post-flop speaks worlds about not only Kristen, but also about Carrie and how his thought process can be a little flawed at sometimes. I mean, this is one of those hands where, you know, people often say, like, people like will type in on Reddit or on Twitter or wherever, some social media place, like, could I have ever gotten away from this, right? Yeah. That's the question. And the answer is often, you know, no, it's just a standard spot. Well, this is the kind of thing people would type in about, but Kristen Bicknell can get away from things that, that normal players can't um, when she's up against at least the likes of Kerry Katz, who, by the way, is no slouch. He's one of the most successful high rolling non pros out there. Yeah, for sure. definitely. He, um, he won a big event last year, big 100K last year at the Aria Super High Roller Bowl, I believe. Oh, yeah. So um, he's a big deal in his own right, maybe the best of the businessmen. But in the end, Chrissy McNeil's going to get him. She's going to get him, and you're going to see how. And Derek John Wright wanted you to see how. Thank you, Derek John Wright. He suggested it on Twitter. We have, are, of course, the poker guys on Twitter. You can just Google that, or you can you know, go here. That's, that's where the tweets happen. Yeah, and you got if you want to suggest a hand for the breakdown, tweet it at us. Include a YouTube link and a timestamp so that way we know where the hand is. We can look at it and, of course, do it. And we got something special to tell you about today. We do. And it is specific to the month of March. Now, what sporting event might be specific to the month of March? Volleyball! There probably is some volleyball. Somewhere. But I'm talking about the basketball. Ooh. The March Madness. And yes. a Nitrogen Sports Poker Room. There's a really good reason to bet on March Madness, and you can have a lot of fun with a four-team parlay, Jonathan. It's pretty awesome. If you just make a four-team parlay bet on nitrogen, it can be for as little as two millibits, which is like $8 worth of betting, you are guaranteed to get a free bet down the line from Nitro after the NCAA tournament is over. Nitro is giving away between one and 10 Bitcoin worth of free bets, depending on who wins the title. If an eight seed or higher wins the title, it's 10 Bitcoin worth of free bets total to the group of people who make this four-team parlay. So you get more fun, you get to bet on more stuff, and you get a free bet back just because they love you. And you get that additional sweat. You want a low seed to win, which is kind of fun anyway, right? Yeah. It's a good sweat. Now, if you want to sign up for Nitrogen, you got to check out our Twitter feed where we're posting links to sign up for Nitrogen. Those are the links you want to use because it gives you access to exclusive Poker Guys events. Extra free stuff. Let's get to the hand. Looks like Kristen going to defend here. Heads up. Cool. Heads up. Off to the flop we go. Wow. Wow. Check. Okay. Check. Very surprised to see Carrie catch. Check back a hand as strong as Ace Jack here on this Ace Queen Queen flop. Check. Check. And we see Carrie catch. Check back the turn as well. I am very surprised that wow. not a single chip has gone in <laughs> post-flop. And now he makes the best hand. Now Kristen checks again. No one has put in any bets post-flop until this river. It's pretty insane, actually. That is 250. Now he over bets. Wow. 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 <laughs> well, she has. Wow, wow, she does fold. <gasps> He didn't lose a single chip post flop in this spot. Wow. That's crazy. That is a boss fold. Well, that looked easy. So easy, in fact, that I'm sure Carrie Katz is thinking, ah, she was never going to call anyway. She never had it. She had 10 high the whole time. Unlucky for me. You know, that's too bad. But in 30 minutes or however long the live stream delay is on this thing, Carrie Katz is going to be very disappointed to find out that he somehow folded out a queen. That's not going to feel very good. It is going to be a little bit devastating for good old Kerry. Now, Kerry goes on to win this event anyway, so not too devastating. Yeah. At the same point, this really exposes either a hole in Kerry's game or also points to sort of how good Kristen Bicknell really is at this point, where she takes just a few pieces of data and is able to turn it into folding a full house with ease and, you know, almost instantly against a good opponent. Right, Kerry Katz is a businessman, he's not a pro, but he definitely knows what he's doing. And that plays into what Kristen is, is doing here because yeah. there are maybe some businessmen who are really, really amateurish who are gonna check back just because they don't have anything for a couple streets. But Kerry Katz knows a lot about poker. He knows that he has a significant range advantage here. He also knows that at this point in the tournament, every pot is valuable. So if you were Kerry Katz and you were sitting there with eight high here and you get this flop, ace, queen, queen, 
it's a wonderful flop as the preflop raiser to continue on, right? You're like, okay, basically free chips for me. Sometimes she calls and I shut it down, whatever. Sometimes maybe you do a delayed C bet. You do it on the turn. Right. Carrie didn't do either of those things. That should be a red flag. Yeah, like if Carrie has two sevens, for example, he's going to bet on the flop or the turn almost always. Almost always, right? If Carrie has seven six suited, he's going to bet on the flop or the turn almost always. He's yeah. just going to feel like, why is he going to allow her to either catch up or beat him or bluff him when this board is so good for him and she shows no propensity to be interested in this pot, right? She checks the flop, he checks it back, she checks again. That was her opportunity if she was gonna bluff or try and steal right there. She doesn't even try. She's not stupid, she knows what's going on a little bit, right? Of course, she does have trip queens yeah, in this case. Yeah, so she's not bluffing. <laughs> okay, but, um, but Carrie, Carrie absolutely would bluff this turn if he didn't, but, but the flop almost always. So right. that's clue number one for sure. Right. So then it comes down to, okay, we're on the river. Is there any way that this could maybe be a chop, Kristen might be thinking? It could be. It could be, but it feels a lot like a queen is far more likely to bet the flop than an ace is because it wants action from the ace. When Carrie has ace-jack on the flop, I actually understand the check back from a practical standpoint. I, it's kind of a more comfortable way to play the hand. Sure. You don't want to put yourself in a sticky situation. At the same point, we go into our podcast how... If you want to be balanced, you're going to have to bet this flop with hands that you don't necessarily want to bet it with that much because it's such a dry flop. You're going to have to bet with ace-jack sometimes. Mm -hmm. But whatever, checking back with ace-jack is fine. When the turn comes, it's a bit unorthodox to check back with ace-jack. But you would think he's more likely to be checking back an ace twice than a bluff twice because with a bluff, he needs to give himself a chance to win this hand. With an ace, he's at least allowing Kristen to bluff the river sometimes, right? I mean, on the turn, the hands, if you're Kristen, that you're putting carry on are hands like, I think, two kings. Yeah. An ace once in a while, king high, that's most of it. Maybe two jacks once in a while, two Maybe. tens once in a while, hands that don't need too much protection. That's about it. Yeah, that seems like about it. It is strange that Kristen doesn't bet the turn, but I yeah. guess she just thinks that it's more likely that Carrie's going to bluff than Carrie has an ace. But once he checks back the turn, she should probably be thinking he has not a bluff that frequently. She gets to the river, and the ace is not a great card, obviously. She's yeah. like, well, if he did have an ace, obviously he gets there. And then Carrie chooses this sizing. And that is really like the, the red alert goes off in her head when she was already a little bit suspicious. There was already a leak in the reactor, and now, now the alarm is going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? I, absolutely, yeah. man. Homer Simpson's at the controls, and it's bad news. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because if Carrie bets a normal size here, if Carrie bets 75,000 to 135, or 60,000, or 80,000, She's really going to have to call, I think, pretty much always because her hand is too good and she's chopping sometimes and winning sometimes. But when he bets 250,000 into 135 and there's no need, based on the way this hand has played out, to, for Kerry to think, there's no reason for him to think that he would have to bet this big as a bluff. Right, you would never think that. Now Kristen's sitting there thinking, I don't believe he'd bet 250 with a queen because there's not a lot no, of, of value not. in that. So it's really an ace or nothing, and it's almost always an ace because he could bet 150 as a bluff just as easily, he right? He bet 75 as a bluff just as easily. If Kerry was sitting there with eight high and somehow his brain turned off for the flop on the turn and he decided, oh, crap, I got to bluff this river because maybe she has 10 high, she's going to fold 10 high for 75K anyway, right? So, yeah, the sizing is definitely a bit of a problem for Kerry having checked twice. Yeah. If Kerry had bet that size over the course of two streets, I think he's getting paid all the way down. I think so. Maybe at least the first bet, maybe not the second one when the ace comes, I don't know. But he's definitely getting more value out of the hand if he starts betting on the turn. Of course, he was behind at the time. But in the end, this is just such incredibly massive sizing in a spot where Kerry can't really have bluffs that easily. It's also problematic because what is he hoping to get called by? Right. Right. It's ace, ace, queen, queen, x. Kristen's like, king high is like what he's targeting, I yeah. think. And he's betting two times the pot. It's asking a lot. He's trying to get her to hero with the calling part of her range and just going for massive value. But I, I think she's too good and too smart for that. It's hard to believe Kristen has a hand like she has even, like right. a queen. Because at some point you think she would have shown her you know, her, her, her strength. Like, she could have let out on the turn, she could have let out on the river. She could have let out even on the flop sometimes. She chooses none of those things, she just keeps checking. It looks like she has nothing at all and just isn't interested in the pot. Which is also kind of why it's such a, a flashy fold, that she never yeah. once put any money in, even with such a strong hand, and then once aggressive actions happened and she was behind, she was like, yeah, yeah no problem. Man, she has such an advantage over a guy like Carrie in these spots, like, it's unbelievable. So we talked about this hand like, oh yeah, you know, just throw it away. Kristen Bicknell, no problem, she's good. And yeah, you know, Carrie Katz gave it away, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> Let's be clear. This is an elite play by an elite player for sure. And I think most people in the world make this call. Yeah. Um, 
What do you guys think about the way this hand was played out by both players? Kristen deciding to never put a chip in the pot at any point is interesting and even a little surprising. I think a lot of players would have bet the turn. Um, Carrie deciding not to bet flop or turn and then sizing it up so big. We didn't like that. What do you guys think? Do you think these guys could have or even should have played their hands differently? And what do you think about the decisions they did make ultimately? Let us know in the comments. We look forward to seeing what you have to say. Something we didn't touch on is also, do you think this leads to a future where Kristen gets to be exploited in spots like this? Right. Which is a question that you might be asking yourself. Now, I personally don't think so because of the nature of the board and the way the board ran out. But maybe you have a different opinion. I would like to hear about that as well. That's a really cool question for sure. Now. Um, that was an elite play by an elite player. Guess what? We have a whole playlist of videos fun one. of us breaking down elite plays. Just the very, very best by the best in the world. You, you should definitely check that out. You just got to click right up here to see those videos. You also got to check out the podcast. Mm -mm. That is where the magic is made. You think we just come up with this on the spot no for way. the video? Hell no. We come up with it on the spot for the podcast, <laughs> which is true. actually a much longer thing. It's 45 minutes long. It's where you get into the nitty gritty, the deep depth depth of -ness, Yeah, that's know? perfect. That's, I was an English major. That's not true. I wasn't. Um, anyway, the podcast is my favorite thing that we do. I think it's the best mm -hmm. thing that we do. I think it's the best learning tool that we have. I also think it's the most funny thing that we do. Yeah. All of those reasons are why you should check it out. It's right here. Get on the podcast, man. Yeah, check it out for sure. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.